My Gavon and my friends, and welcome to another video. Today we will be talking about the second to last chapter of the Return of the King, the Scouring of the Shire, and what happened during it, because that chapter was cut from the Return of the King movie adaptation by Peter Jackson, and at the end of the video I will speculate on why the chapter wasn't in the movie. So let's get right into it. To understand well the chapter I'm about to resume, we must go back to the two towers. As we know, Saruman was locked up in his tower of Orthanc because the Ents raided Isengard and defeated him. However, Treebid or Fangorn, the chief Ent, watches him and installs a barrier of Huons all around Isengard so Saruman cannot escape without the Ents knowing. But Saruman manages to persuade Fangorn with his magic and dangerous voice to let him go and that is how he escapes Orthanc with his servant Wormtongue. So Saruman has escaped Nan Kurunir and that is very important for the rest of our story. Now back to our hobbits. As we know, Frodo and Sam have completed their quest and the Dark Lord Sauron is destroyed forever and peace comes back to Middle Earth. Our four hobbits are heading home and Gandalf parts with them to go see Tom Bombadil and to tell him of their adventures. When they arrive to the Brandywine Bridge, they find it barred and Hobbit tells them that the orders come from the chief, and Frodo suspects Mr. Lotho Sagbo Baggins. After that, Bill Fernie, the evil man that Br they met in Bree, comes to investigate what happens, and Merry is so angry to find him that Fernie runs away. After that, the gatekeeper hobbits tells them that it, is, that it is illegal to come here, and they have access to nothing, and the Shire looks like a desolate place. They decide to go straight to Hobbiton to investigate to investigate the matter and on the road, a squad of sheriffs arrest the four hobbits. Frodo, Sam, Merry and Pippin laugh at them and they even stay at the sheriff house and they found, and they found that it is also a desolate and ugly house. Then they headed back to Hobbiton and they found it completely destroyed and ugly. But in the village of Bywater, they saw ill-favoured men lounging against the inn wall. They were squint-eyed and sallow-faced. The ruffians talked to them about a certain person called Sharky, probably the chief everyone is talking about, and then the ruffians start to insult them, and Pippin, furious, draws out his sword and says that he is the king's messenger. The ruffians were so unused to, see, to seeing such determination and courage that they ran off. The four hobbits decide to end once and for all the ruffians authority and they raid the shire and Sam goes to see Farmer Cotton because he is the chief person about and the hobbits needed him. Some ruffians came to end the raising of the shire but they fled because their chief fell dead with four arrows in him because he tried to stab Merry. But it was not over, more of them were to come but for now they had a bit of peace. Farmer Cotton explained what had happened during the, this moment of peace. It had begun with Pimple, or Lotho, his real name. He had bought much and had sold a lot of pipeweed. He had bought Sandyman's mill, but then men had come over and they started to build ugly houses and cutting down trees in the Shire. The mayor, however, had protested, but the ruffians took him to a hole in Mickle Delving that they called the Lock Holes. Lotho had done real bad stuff like closing the inns, allowing men to steal the food and let the hobbits starve. And then Sharky came and things got much worse then. Nobody had seen him but Farmer Cotton says that he is the biggest ruffian of the lot and the only thing he does is burn and destroys. He even cut the party tree. Now the battle was about to begin. The Tux had come in reinforcement in the battle and then the ruffians came but they were outnumbered and the hobbits won the battle. It was called the Battle of Bywater, 1419 and it was the last battle fought in the Shire. But the hobbits hadn't finished, they needed to deal with this Sharky. According to Farmer Cotton, he lives in Bag End. On their way, they saw the desolate land around them and it was one of the saddest hours of their lives. Everything had been burned, changed, destroyed and Sam even burst into tears. At that moment, Ted Sandyman came up to them and laughed at them, for he was on the side of the ruffians. At that moment, he saw the escort and ran away like a coward. When they entered Bag End, 
they discovered that Sharky is no other than Saruman himself and that he had been the, the, the one responsible for all these mischiefs. Frodo lets him go, even if Saruman is truly an evil character, but as he passed Frodo, he stabbed him with a knife. But Frodo had no injury, thanks to his mythical coat. Even after that, Frodo let Saruman go, but he told Wormtong that he could stay in the Shire because he had done no evil to him. Then Saruman turned and started to say all of the evil things Wormtong had done, such as killing no Lotho Pimple and then he kicked Worm in the face. At that move, Wormtong became angry and stabbed Saruman in the back, killing him. But after that, Wormtong tried to run away, but three hobbit archers shot him down before Frodo could even speak. And now, why did Peter Jackson cut off this chapter from the film ad adaptation of The Lord of the Rings? I think that this is understandable, because the main evil of Sauron had already been defeated, and of course, a film cannot have all the details a book has, and the film was long enough at, as it is. And in the Return of the King extended edition, Star Saruman gets stabbed in the pack by Wormtongue on top of Warthang just when he was about to tell Gandalf and the others where the great battle of Middle-earth was going to take place, which adds some suspense and I find that this was a very clever way to illustrate the death of Saruman. So this is the end of our video, I hope you liked it and if you did don't hesitate to leave a like and subscribe to my channel.